Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about some of the pros and cons of studying in France. And at the end of the video, I'm also going to answer some of the questions that you guys have asked me in the comment sections on my previous videos. So stay tuned till the end if you want to see that. Before I begin, I also want to remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be uploading a lot more content just like this and I don't want you to miss any of it. Let's begin. Let's first talk about some of the pros of living and studying your masters in France. First and foremost, tuition as well as other living expenses are far lesser than other US universities. Probably the most expensive school to go to in France is HEC Paris and that costs 40,000 euros over two years. Other schools cost even lesser. They can range from 15,000 to 35,000 for the entire program as well. There are even public universities that are completely free and also teach in English. And moreover, at HEC, for example, we're not even obligated to spend thousands of euros every year on books, just like they do in US universities, because our professors provide us most of the material that we require and the library has the rest. This is much, much lesser than the 50 to $60,000 you spend every year at a US university. Living expenses in Paris also average around 1000 euros a month and they can be much lower too. Of course, it all depends on your living standard, but I've heard and seen people live with like 600 to 800 euros a month as well if you want to go really, really cheap. And this includes your rent, your food, your groceries, your transport, every single thing. The costs are also definitely helped by the government support that you get over here. Healthcare, for example, is 70% covered by the government and for the rest 30%, you can take out an insurance which costs around 200 euros for a year. The government also provides this thing called CAF, which is a rental subsidy that they offer to all students. The second pro of studying in France is that you can stay back here for one or even two years if you're Indian after your graduation to look for a job. Once you graduate, you can convert your student visa into a visa called the APS and this is valid for one year. And on this visa, you can work full time for six months or part time for 12 months to support yourself while you look for a job which is related to your field. If you're Indian, you can even renew this APS for an additional one year, giving you a total of two years after graduation to look for a job. The third pro is that there's no lottery for a work visa. Unlike the H-1B program in the US, getting a work visa in France does not involve a lottery. If you've got a job with a full-time permanent contract while you're on your APS, you can convert that to a work visa without any problem or without any further complications. And this work visa is valid for four years and it's even renewable. The fourth point is that you can apply for citizenship or permanent residency after only two years after graduation. If you studied a master's program in France, you hold a full-time job contract, you can speak French at a B1 level, and you can prove that you've sufficiently integrated into the society. Of course, getting citizenship is a lot more complicated than this, but you're eligible to apply for it after two years. You can even choose to apply for either citizenship or permanent residency. And once you've got either of those, you can stay here for as long as you want. In in general, whether you're a student, whether you're on a work visa or you've got permanent residency or citizenship, life in France from a visa perspective is a lot more stable and secure as compared to other countries like the United States. In the US, on the other hand, after you graduate, you have about three months to look for a job. And then after that, if you're in a STEM course, you can stay back for three years working on that job. And during that time, if you don't get an H1B, which is a lottery, by the way, so no matter how good you are, you can still not get it. If you don't get an H1B, you'll have to go back home or to a different country. The fifth point is that there are a ton of beautiful places close by and you don't need another visa to travel to most of them. France is in Europe and you know what else is in Europe? Germany, Spain, the Netherlands, Italy, Denmark, other Scandinavian countries, Iceland and tons of other places that are so beautiful and are part of the Schengen region. So you don't need any other visa except for your French student visa to travel to any of those places. And usually there are low cost buses or even flights that don't cost a lot of money to go to these places. You can stay at backpacker hostels and it doesn't have to cost a lot of money to explore an entire continent. So when you're studying in France, you can use your weekends, you can use your study breaks to go to all these places and explore the region. The sixth point is that you get to learn a new language and a new culture. Over the last two years, even though I was in the US for half a year, I think I've definitely reached a point where I can read and I can write and I can have a basic conversation about medium complexity topics in French. And according to my French friends, my French is improving on a weekly basis. By being in France and learning French, I've become knowledgeable about a lot more things. I've become aware and knowledgeable about a whole new culture, a whole new way of living life, different life philosophies, all kinds of new art and culture. In general, my worldview has improved tremendously since I got here. 
It also really helps that when you're in an international city like Paris, you can make friends who are not just French, but also from all over the world. And this increases your worldview even beyond French culture. All right, next let's speak about some of the not so good things, the cons of studying in France. The first one is that you have to learn a new language. All that I just said about learning a new language and culture is also a con. It's really not easy to manage academics, job hunting, socializing and networking, and then also navigating in a new place where you don't speak the language at all, along with learning the language in the first place. Not to mention a lot of the opportunities that I came across when I was at HEC and generally in Paris, they require you to speak French and it just feels a bit bad to have to miss out on a lot of them. However, I can say that now I'm slowly getting there where I can take advantage of those opportunities. When I moved to Los Angeles last year, I was living and working in a fully English speaking environment. And I realized that everything was so much easier. Socializing and making friends, finding and taking advantage of all the opportunities, navigating the bureaucracy and just generally living life. And it also just felt a lot more natural and comfortable for me since English is my first language. Back in France, especially at the beginning, it can be quite challenging and it can be really stressful to be in a place where you don't speak the language very well. However, now, after two years of learning and improving my language abilities, I don't find it as hard as I used to. That being said, I think living in an English-speaking environment is just generally a lot more ideal. The second con of staying in France is that finding a job or an internship can be a lot more challenging than you would expect. Because of the language constraint and even generally, it becomes quite hard to find a job or an internship in France. So, while it might be really easy to get a work visa once you've found a job, getting that job in the first place can be quite challenging. That being said, it's definitely not impossible. If you attend a top school, your alumni network will be amazing and that would definitely help you get a job in France. And moreover, in France, even right now, there are a lot of companies, big and small, who are looking for talent that is fluent in English. Because a lot of people here don't speak English that well, and as companies are becoming more and more international, the requirement for English-speaking professionals is just increasing. And if you spend your time wisely, you'll be able to improve your French to a level that you can even find a job in French during the time that you're studying here. It's definitely very hard, but it's not impossible. And the payoff is that once you do find a job, you can get a work visa without any extra hassle and you can just stay here for as long as you want to. Another disadvantage that I want to mention about studying in France is that the opportunities that you get here after graduating are probably not as lucrative and extremely well-paying as they would be in the US, for example. But you do also have to consider that the cost of living in France is also much lower than it is in California or in New York. And there are plenty of other advantages like having a stable life and no visa lottery to make up for that. The third main con of living and studying in France is that life over here can sometimes just generally be a bit inconvenient. Supermarkets, for example, they close very early. They close at about 8.30 to 9 p.m. on weekdays. And on Sundays, most supermarkets also just close at 1 p.m. You sometimes need to take an appointment weeks in advance to get a haircut. That's actually why I started cutting my own hair. Or even to get your cycle repaired, you require an appointment and that can take a lot of time. Finding an apartment in Paris can be a complete pain, a process that takes sometimes up to two or three months, even for French people, let alone internationals. The bureaucracy can be extremely slow and bank accounts can be a complete pain to deal with. The list goes on and on. Basically, life is sometimes quite inconvenient here. And that's especially if you're used to having everything done for you back in India, or if you're from the US where everything is open 24 seven. In France, you have a really, really good work-life balance, but everybody else around you also has a really good work-life balance. So, so that's what leads to, you know, things closing early and things not opening on Sundays and things moving a bit slow and so on. All right, in this section, I'm gonna answer some of the questions that you guys asked me in the comments on my previous videos. The first one is LSB or HEC. If I had to go back and choose between London School of Business and HEC Paris, what would I choose? Honestly, for me, I would still pick HEC Paris. The LSB program is just one year long and the HEC program is three years and I really wanted to do a program that is much longer than one year. Moreover, I think the stay back prospects in France are just a lot better than in the UK. The second question is how would one offset a bad GPA or a backlog in their undergrad. Actually, a lot of people message me asking me about this. They've got a backlog in their undergrad. How would this look on their application? They've got a bad GPA. How would that look? So basically, like I mentioned in one of my previous videos about the three things that you need to get into HEC Paris, you can offset a bad undergrad academic record to a great extent by getting an amazing GMAT score. And when I say amazing, I mean something like, if you get like 740, 750, 760, 770, something like that, that can really, really greatly offset your bad undergrad record. I mean, it's not a guarantee that you'd get in. I mean, honestly, this is something that, you know, no one can really tell you, 
But my advice here would basically just be to just honestly, you can't really do anything about your undergrad record. If you've already got a backlog or a bad GPA, you can't really do anything about that right now. What you can do is improve your profile as much as you can, whether that's through your GMAT or whether that's through other extracurriculars and other things and whatnot. The third question is from Katrine. And she asks, am I too old if I'm 27 years old and I'm joining the specialized master's program? Absolutely not. I actually know a lot of people who are 26, 27, even 28, who are at HEC in the MIM and the MSc program. And what really matters is how much work experience you have. So for the MIM as well as the MSCs, you need to have fewer than two years of work experience. And, and yeah, you'll definitely fit just right in at HEC. All right, everything being said, there are definitely pros and cons of living anywhere in the world. And France is no exception. I, for one, really, really love living here. I really value the security and the stability that I get by not having to worry about getting a work visa, by not having to worry about a visa lottery and all of that. My healthcare costs are taken care of. And in general, I can fully focus on, on developing myself and working to find a good job that I like. Paris is also a very beautiful place to live in. And I'll never say no to French wine, French bread, cakes and desserts and also the amazing art culture and the museums over here. So if you like this video, please help me out by giving me a thumbs up. And also, if you like this content, hit that subscribe button because I'm gonna be uploading a lot more content just like this. I'm gonna be moving back to the HEC campus very soon in about the next two months. And I'll be uploading a lot more content from there too. You can click on either of these two videos. I think they'll really help you out. See you guys in the next one.